I'll keep your dog. <laughs> well, how did I get in this mess I'm in if Jesus is supposed to protect me? Well, you put Jesus as a hobby, not as a passion. I like it. Okay, I, I want to get started with this. As they put this up here, thank you, Dominique, for allowing me to keep this together for me. But before we get started, I, I always like to, I like to do just, I'm a humorous kind of guy, and I'm not a joke teller, but I found this really cool one, and I thought I would tell it to you. So it's really neat. It goes like this. There was a man, and he had a heart attack, and he was rushed to a hospital, and they did surgery on him. When he woke up, he found out he was in a Catholic hospital being taken care of by the nuns. So as he was waking up, the nun said to him, he said, she said, how do you feel? He says, I feel pretty good. She says, great. Do you have insurance? He says, I don't have any insurance. And she says, the nun says, well, do you have any money to pay for this, this visit? He says, I don't have any money. And she says, well, do you have any relatives that could help you pay for this visit? He says, I only have one sister, and she's an unmarried nun. Well, the nun was getting aggravated and irritated. She goes, we are not unmarried. We are married to God. He said, even better, give the bill to my brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah. I'll just wait. That'll... <laughs> brother-in-law, what would that make? Oh, that's God. Anyway, so, you know, I want to start by saying that, start, start instead of saying that so that I could say, this is what the world does. The world throws problems at us continuously like that. Guy gets up out of a surgery, and the first thing he's asked how he's going to pay his bill. You have a good day, and the first thing that happens is somebody comes your way and tries to ruin your day and try to just throw something in your face to mess up every good thing that God has planned for you. But what you need to start fo focusing on is not the problem at large, but the solution that's already been prepared in front of you, which is God. So I want to start that by saying the title of today's message is nothing more than the F word. <laughs> you should see your faces. People for the first time, he's not going to say it, is he? He's just got the word up there, right? Forgiveness <laughs> is all the power you will ever need. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You guys crack me up. The world throws this kind of stuff at us, man, and expects us. You know, as I said before, the man gets up out of the hospital bed and he gets, he wants to pay. How are you going to pay the bill? And what are you going to do this? Guys, before I move any further, the F word took care of everything. The forgiveness that God brought amongst his people has taken care of everything. If I was in a restaurant, my wife and I, and one of my kids and their husband was sitting at a, you know, you know, over there, they didn't see us, I'd call the waitress over and I'd say, bring me their bill. And i pay for their bill. And then when they were done eating, they would say, can we have the bill? And the waitress would say, you don't need the bill. It's already been paid for. Who paid for it? Your father. Amen. There's no difference. If me, a sinful father, can do that for my children, how much more does God have plans for you? Somebody say Amen. amen. So forgiveness is all the blessings and all the power you'll ever need. We're going to figure this out together. We're going to figure out forgiveness, where it starts, why it doesn't take place. What is it? I mean, okay, forgiveness is just one little simple word, but there's so much behind it. And I'm going to break it down and make it really simple, and then we're going to go have an amazing time. We're not that this is not going to be an amazing time, but we're going to go out there and have an amazing time. So listen to this. Check it out. I'm going to go start with Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. And this is, what, this is what it says. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, hmm. but fools despise wisdom and um, instruction. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's start off by saying this. First of all, the word fear 
the word fear doesn't mean, I'm afraid. Yeah, you, we should be afraid of God to some degree. I mean, he is God. He's the creator of the universe, and his wrath is beyond what we can ever handle. But that's not the fear they're talking about. In the Hebrew, what he's saying is you need to respect and you need to honor God. Why respect and honor God? Because when you respect and honor God, you follow God. But if you don't respect and honor God, you follow the world. And if you follow the world, it has its blessings waiting for you, which is a short-term blessing, and it only leads to a demise. But here, what it says, if you follow the Lord, the word, um, I mean, the word uh, knowledge is your discernment, your understanding, and your wisdom. The fear of the Lord, the respect and the, and the reverence of, God, of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What is knowledge? It's discernment. It's understanding. It's wisdom. It's not just man wisdom. It's God wisdom. So if you honor and respect God, you get God wisdom. If you honor and respect the world, you get world wisdom. One leads you to glory. The other one leads you to a mess. But the word goes on and it says, but fools despise wisdom. In other words, the word, fools, they say, I don't want any wisdom. I don't need that godly wisdom. It's not, therefore, I'm going to forfeit my discipline. I'm going to forfeit God's instruction, and I'm going to forfeit his correction upon my life. I choose not to do it. See, God's a gentle God. He's not a mean God. He's a gentle God. He says, you do whatever you want, but I'm just telling you what's going to work. So see, if you are willing, if you are, like you and myself are willing to, re- to fear God, which is honor and respect him, then he's going to give us the godly wisdom that we need. He's going to direct our path in the right direction we need to go and he's going to bless us beyond what we can ever think or imagine this is where it starts right here this is what brings the power of the f word forgiveness is if we fear and let god lead us to the place where he has for us somebody say amen out there but you see i love that because what ends up happening is if you honor him and you respect him if you don't honor him excuse me and you don't respect him then you won't understand the promises that he has for you. How can you receive a blessing from someone if you choose to honor them, if you choose to, to, to walk with them? You, you know, if it's your birthday and I got an amazing gift for you, you're never, if you don't ever come and see me, how am I going to get the gift to you? You see, you walk with God, and in the blessings of the Lord are yea and amen, and they come with it. Amen? So I love that, but here, we don't, we don't do that because what ends up happening in our life is we, we don't see God as a God that we want to honor and respect. We see him as this big, fearful, mean, deep-voiced English man. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. That's who you think God is. You think he's like this, he's got this big, deep voice, and he... <laughs> This is how we fear God. Listen, it's like this. Joseph. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Joseph, it's your father. Yes, father. <laughs> I was watching you watch TV. I saw you reach into the bowl and eat the candy bar you told your wife you didn't have any more. It was delicious, Father. <laughs> when she asked you if you had any more chocolate, you told her no. I'm sorry, Father. <laughs> and for that, you shall burn in hell. <laughs> Your children will burn in hell. Your grandchildren will burn in hell. I'll keep your talk. <laughs> How do we respect a God if that's who we think he is? This big, giant, deep-voiced Englishman that sits on his throne and just finds things wrong with us. Is that really the God we serve? No. No. I'm going sh- to show you that it's not the God that we serve. Watch. Be with me on this one. Listen. Watch this. Here we go, Isaiah chapter 53. I'm going to bring this to you really simply. It says this, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. 
And you're sitting there going, but I don't even know what that means. I wouldn't know what it means either because you read it. I never opened the Bible before. Somebody might say, I don't even know what that means. Well, let's start by saying this. You see, let's talk about the power of the F word. Let's talk about the power of forgiveness. And because he forgave you, your blessings are beyond what you could think or imagine. He's just waiting for you to go to the bank and cash him in. So here what you got to understand is this right here. You said, look at your life right now. Your whole life is like, oh, my life is miserable, and I got this wrong, and why was I born into this world, and I got no this and no that, and my job, my wife, my husband, my mom, my dad. See, this is all you're doing. You're focusing on the problem at large rather than the solution that has already been given to you. Amen? You say, I don't understand. Well, look at the first line of what I just read. It says this here. Surely he has borne our grief. Well, look at the, I mean, I'm not an English major, but the word has mean he already did it. Well, you mean he, he took on my grief before I was born? He took on your grief before Jesus was born. Jesus wasn't even born yet. God hadn't even sent the son yet. And it says, surely he has already taken care of your grief. What does that mean? Now watch this. Because if you understand it in English, you get the word grief. But when you break it down in Hebrew, it makes a lot more sense and it gives you a lot more peace because now you see how powerful the great I am is. You understand the power of the F word and you want to respect him. You want to fear him. You want to honor him. You want to walk with him because you know the blessings that he's got for you. So watch this. He says this, surely he has borne our griefs. What in the world does that mean, borne our griefs? Born means he carried them off. Well, what is a grief? In the Bible, it's a word that means anxiety, calamity, disease, sickness, all the stuff that is in your head when you're sitting there at home or when you're looking at your world around you and the enemy's reminding you, going, look at that right there, man. I, you know, your, your life's a mess. You're never going to find a husband. You're never going to find a wife. Your parents don't love you. You got nothing. You're going to mean nothing. You're going nowhere. You're about nothing. This is what he's doing. That's what the enemy's doing. And you're waiting to hear this God go, and I agree. No, that's not the God. He already said, listen, give me your anxiety. Give me your calamity. Give me your disaster. Give me your sickness. Give me your disease. It's going on my back, and I'm taking it away for you. But you see, we don't understand that because we're sitting there thinking, oh, my gosh, I must have done something wrong. God is mad at me. He's, he's not a mean God. He's not. He already took your sorrows. You see, the sin you choose to live in is your own punishment. God's got you covered in heaven. It's how you choose to live on earth. So then he goes on and he says, he said, he, he carried our griefs away. He carried our anxiety, our disease, and our sickness. He carried our sorrows, the word of God says. What's the word sorrow mean? He took away your physical pain. He took away your mental pain. What do you mean he took away my physical pain? And my he took it all away from you already. He took away this mess. He goes on to say this. He was wounded for our transgressions. You see the word wounded in the, in the English language means I was wounded. Ow, oh, I just wounded myself. But no, the word wounded in the Hebrew means he was defiled, severely disfigured. When, they, when he was on the cross, his own friends who he knew for three years, his own family members did not even recognize him because he was so disfigured. He had to take on the, the sin of the world so you didn't have to carry it anymore. Somebody getting a hold of this? But here we go. He carried our, tra he was wounded for our transgressions. What is a transgression? I was reading my Bible as a young Christian. I'm going, somebody tell me, what is a transgression? I don't even know what a transgression is. Is it like a new drink at Starbucks? I don't, give me the transgression in the 20 ounce, please. No, transgression is this. It's your punishment for breaking God's law. A transgression is what he plans to do and how he plans to punish you for breaking his law. But you just said he wasn't a mean God. No, but because of the blood of Jesus, because of Jesus, Jesus brought the F word. He brought God's forgiveness upon you. You see, and he carried off all the law-breaking garbage. He said in the New Testament, Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to help you fulfill it because you don't have what it takes to do it. Amen? Amen. All I need you to do is follow me. But he goes on to say this. He goes, I was bruised for your iniquities. You see, bruised is a, is a silly word. I got a bruise somewhere from banging into something. But that's not the bruise he's talking about. The word bruised in the Hebrew means he was crushed. He was broken. He was destroyed. When he stood before Pontius Pilate and he said, I could stop this from happening, Jesus is like, no, come on, come on, bring it. Bruise me and disfigure me because I'm not going anywhere. 
You want to talk about, you couldn't con him out of this. I'm right here. I ain't going anywhere. Hey, come on, pilot. Hey, yo, hey, yo, pilot, come on. Hey, yo, pilot, come on, bring all you got. You know, he was like, all went rocky on pilot. Come on, bring it. I'm not going anywhere. Bruise me, because we're taking these iniquities, these transgressions, these griefs, all the stuff that is ruining my kids. I'm taking them all. Amen? And here's the beauty. He wasn't even here yet. This was how powerful God is, that the plan was already finished before it ever began. You were successful before you could even fail. You just didn't know it yet because you believed the lies of the enemies. What are you talking about, Joe? It's like my little grandbaby, Gracie. She's like two years old, not even, just turned two years old. So I get the babysitter the other day, right? I'm babysitting her. They leave me with a kid with a full diaper. I mean a full diaper coming out the back and everything. And they want me to change the diaper. Dominique's like, I'll see you later. See you, Dad. Love you. I'm out of here. Okay. Again, I take Grace and I pick her up. I'm like, whoo, Lord. So I take her and I change her diaper. And, I, and it's like, you know, you know how it is. Like, you know, so I, I'm t- and I take the diaper and I wad it up and I throw it in the trash can. I took her grief. I took her iniquity. I took her transgression. Or really, was it mine? I'm not sure. But I took it. And I threw it in the trash can. And she went and got it and brought it back to me. This is what we do in this world. God takes it from us and we bring it back. Oh! I don't understand that. Anyway, what is an iniquity? Iniquity is perversity. It is deprived depravity, which is moral corruption and wickedness, gross, unfair behavior. He took all of your corruption and your wickedness and your punishment. He took it all because he said, bruise me. I will take the punishment so they don't have to do it. Why? Because when I show up, I don't only show up with long hair and a beard and 12 guys that I got to walk around with for three years. I show up to bring the F word. (laughs) Woo is right, man. That's powerful, man. That's powerful stuff. He goes, then I like what it says here. I like how it says, um, and they were smitten for God. The people that were looking at Jesus on the cross going, he must have done something wrong. No, he did that because you did something wrong. That's what that means there. But when he says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, oh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. In other words, without him, we wouldn't have peace. So what does that mean? The chastisement, he was punished so that we could have peace. But the word peace means completeness, soundness, health, prosperity, to be made safe. Everything that comes against you, everything that you think is going to defeat you has been defeated on the cross when he brought the F word. Amen? It's defeated. I'm telling you, say, but Joe, why is it all over me? Because you keep getting the dirty diaper out of the trash can. You got to walk with him in the fear of the Lord. You have to respect him. You have to honor him. You have to walk with him, and he will take you along this journey and move things out of your way. But I don't see it happening. You're not supposed to see it happening, or otherwise you could be able to do it. And you can't handle what God has to handle. Amen? That's why he, he didn't get bruised on his back so you can make yourself peanut butter and jelly. He got bruised on his back, and he got beaten and torn up so that you can't be chastised and damned to hell. Amen? Or that you can live a blessed life on this earth. We inherit the blessings of heaven. We inherit the kingdom of God before we enter the kingdom of God, which is when we die. These are the blessings. This is so, this little scripture is so powerful. People are like, I don't even understand. It's right here in front of us. Why don't we get a hold of us? He said, by his stripes, we were healed. By all the blows on his back, he took away your sickness. He took away your disease. He took away your anxiety. He took away your garbage. He took away the mess in your, he took around the garbage in your life around you. He took it all from you. Pilate tried to stop him. Come on, man. Let me get you out of this mess. I don't want to get out of this mess because of the love that I have for my children. Not that they deserve it, but because I love them. Not that my kids deserve me to pay for their meal, but it's because I love them that I pay for it. They don't have to do anything for it. They're my kids. Amen. God is saying the same thing. I know you can't. You didn't mean it. I know you can't. But I'm doing this because I love you, not because you did something for me. That's what you got to stop doing. Because if I do more, God will do more. No, that's not how it works. All you have to do is believe. He will do the rest. Now, on this earth, 
walking in this earth, if you try, choose to walk outside of the boundaries of life, well, then, you know, if you try to drive, you know, in your lane and you, ch you decide you want to drive on the opposite side of the road, well, you're going to get the consequences of your decision. Same way with life. If you choose to not follow God, if you choose not to fear God, which is respect him and love him, well, then you're going to get the blessings of the world. And that you can't blame anybody because you made the decision. But I'm here telling you right now, stop with it. Cut it out. Snap out of it. Go this way. Trust me, it's blessed the heck out of you. Amen? Somebody say amen in this house. Come on, man. Woo! Jesus, bless him. So let me, let me bring the ship down to a close and dock it with this. All right? This, this part, this thought right here is like, okay, so Jesus came to take all this from me. So how, how, do, I, how do I keep it? Because I, I keep messing up. I keep, I keep having an adulterous relationship. I keep having a drug re relationship. I keep having an alcohol relationship. I, I, I keep having this anger issue inside of me. Don't you realize that all this junk in your body that messes with you right here brings you to the sickness and the disease of your body? That's what the enemy wants. So here it is. If you're a Christian, you got to know this scripture. Now, I'm not going to break it down because it'll take me two years, but I'm just going to say it really quick so we can understand this in a simple form of how we're going to accomplish the absorption of the F word, which is God's forgiveness on our life and the blessings that come with it. John chapter 15, verse 1. You can just listen to this. I, I, I sprung this on Frankie last minute. I don't even think he had time to put it up yet, but I'm just going to read it. Jesus said this. I am the vine. Pastor Shannon, why don't you join me up here? I am the vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will give him more fruit. You already have been clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Jesus said this. You remain in me, and I I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, and it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am. Woo, there's that word again. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can't do anything. Turn it around. Apart from me, you can't do anything. But with me, you can do all things. Amen. So then he goes on in verse 9. He says, as the Father has loved me. And the word love doesn't mean, oh, give me a big hug and a kiss. It means protect, provide, nourish, and cherish. So if you take that word, as the Father has protected me, love me, so I have protected or love you. Now remain in my protection, Jesus says. If you keep my commands, if you just fear me and respect me and honor me and walk with me, you will be in my commands. If you remain in my commands, you will remain in my protection. In my love, nobody's going to mess with you if King Daddy's with you. It ain't going to happen. No demon in hell's going to come stand in front of you. Listen, Joe, by the way, listen, you can talk to my, my daddy about that one. Go right ahead. Now you're going to hear God go, Satan. Now you're going to hear his wrath. So he says... He says this, he says, um, remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and I remain in his protection, Jesus says, our love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy is absolutely complete. What does that mean? The joy that he's talking about, that when, you, when the joy of Jesus is in you, there is absolutely nothing on the face of this earth that can bring you down even in the middle of a storm. Yeah. Amen. Where's that at in the Bible? Jesus slept through a wicked storm. He didn't even wake up. I, got, I am joy. I don't have joy in me, Jesus said. I am joy. I don't have peace in me. I am peace. I don't have power around me. I am power. And it's all yours if you just follow me. Watch this. Grab that robe, Pastor Shannon. Let me shut it down with this. Watch this. Look at this. Let me show you that. I love this little example. You just grab this end right here. Now, this is God. Just, we're just saying, because somebody just turned the TV on and like, dear God, God goes to Orlando Family Church. Yeah, no, he's playing God. This represents God. He says, I am the gardener. This is the vine, which represents Jesus. We are the branches. Where does the fruit grow? On the branches. So he gets rid of the garbage in our life that bears no fruit so that we can have more of what's good rather than let the bad cut us down. So here's what you do. You take this right here, and no matter how far, and I'll just do it for short reasons here, but here's my, here's my line. I choose to walk with God. 
I choose to fear him, not be afraid of him, but to reverence him and respect him. And when I'm doing so, I'm going to take on the blessings of Isaiah 53. He's going to take my grief, my anxiety, my sorrow, my sickness, my disease, my pain, my mental anguish. He's going to take it all. But you got to walk with him, you see? So how do you walk with him? He provided a vine. You ever go in the mall and see those kids with that harness on and they got a leash and their parents are walking? That's so they don't go too far in the wrong direction. So God provided the vine for you, and as you're walking, as far as I want to go, you're going to get out of line because we're human. We're going to try to desire and please the flesh because that's who we are. If we're having a bad day, we're going to try and do something to get us out of that. Just stick with God. So as I'm walking in the wrong direction, no matter how excited I am, thinking I'm going, I got Jesus right here. I got Jesus right here. I'm walking in that right direction. See, what ends up happening is he stops you. Sometimes you've already gone too far, but he don't let you fall. He won't let you fall. He stops you. Look, look, look. Whoa. This is what he's got me right here. I let go of this rope right now. I am fall flat on my face. And he reels you back in. And when he reels you back in, he brings you as a loving father and push you in, in the direction he has chosen. You walk with me, Joe. So anytime you, but here's where God doesn't work for people. And you go, well, I'm a Christian. It doesn't work for me because this is Jesus. And this is where you put him right here in your pocket. You see, I got, I'm a Christian. I'm holding on to Jesus. I go to church. Yep, I'm a good guy. I read the Bible once a year. I go to church. He's right here. So then when you walk, you don't see it. Now you're already in. You say, well, well, how did I get in this mess I'm in if Jesus is supposed to protect me? Well, you put Jesus as a hobby, not as a passion. Now, where is Jesus? Where is he? Oh, he's over there. But it doesn't make a difference how you've gone, how far off to the right, how far off to the left, how doomed you are, you know, how, how messed up your family is. It doesn't make a difference. You call upon that name. Jesus, remember last week? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the father sends the vine. Bring me the vine. He brings me out of my, my mucky muck. Watch this. This is going to be tough. You better, you better eat your, your super vitamins this morning. Ready? Now, you're flat down here, but God pulls you out with the vine. Here we go. He's pulling out. He's pulling out, you see? He wheels you in the right direction, and he blesses you. It's as simple as that. If you want to be blessed, then get hold of the F word. In order to get hold of the F word forgiveness, you better not let go of Jesus, the vine. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. And just as my Father protected me, I will protect you. You may not see it. You may not understand it. But I got your back. Somebody say amen. Somebody get to their feet and give Jesus a big God bless you. Can you do that? Woo, come on, man. Give him what he deserves. That's all I got. We don't want you to leave today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Bible says the only way to the Father is through the Son. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We invite you to take a moment and ask God to forgive you and to help you follow him on this journey. If you've made this decision today, make sure that you get into a church that teaches the Word of God. And remember to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you're in the area, come visit us at any time. Check out times and location at orlandofamilychurch.com or at 407-462-1358. Hope to see you there.